That's right, son. That's a horse's head. A thoroughbred horse. And that black bar there means first. First in name and first in battle. There's only one outfit that fits that description. That's the 1st Cavalry Division. A horse, mm -hmm. Pete. Did you throw his rifle from on horseback and charge the enemy? Well, that was the idea up to the last war. One of our regiments fought on horseback in the Civil War. The cavalry were the tanks in reconnaissance of those days. The end of the Civil War didn't end the fighting for the cavalry. They had a job to do out west, fighting Indians. They got down from their horses pretty often to do the actual shooting, like General Custer and his 7th Regiment at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. That 7th Regiment of Custer's was the granddaddy of the 1st Cavalry Division, which was formed in 1921. They kept operating with horses until they went to the South Pacific in 1943 as Doefoots. Cavalry sabers were turned in for bayonets. And each G.I. did his own steeplechasing. I guess they figured the jungle was too rough for the tender skin of a horse. And oh brother, so was that combat training. We got to know what the nickname Tenderfoot really meant. Tender feet and wet feet too, when we practiced amphibious landings. In February 1944, we went gunning for the Japs on Los Negros Island in the Admiralties. It was a good thing we didn't have our mounts along. The racket those Navy guns made would have scared them to death, like it almost did us. We loaded the landing craft the same way we did on maneuvers. But it wasn't a rehearsal this time. It was a public performance. Our throats were drier than they'd been even after a hard ride on a dusty trail. We got ashore okay, looked easy. But our troubles was just beginning. The Japs had Imperial Marines to protect their airstrip. They was crack troops, big fellas. Not like the little mavericks we'd expected. Half of them was loco drunk. They'd charge us singing deep in the heart of Texas, honest to God. Didn't fool us none. Ain't heard a Jap with a Texas draw yet. It was a real wildcat scramble. But tough as they were, we fought them at point-blank range, sometimes man to man. We had a lot of heroes in that scrap, but not all lived to get their medals, including this Signal Corps cameraman who made his last picture that day. the same, we beat the Japs hollow. Killed off a big herd of them. Took away their airstrip and their islands. The chief was pleased. Now every man, tank and gun could point over the water to the Philippines. To Batang. The 1st Cavalry was the first to hit Leyte in November 1944. We rode some strange beasts into the landing. Amtraks, buffaloes, alligators, LCVPs. Rough riding too. Didn't get saddle sore, but almost got seasick. Made our stomach steadier, though, to see the rocket ships. An Air Force, given the Japs a go at all it. They called the place we came ashore White Beach. It wasn't quite so white when we left it. We were pinned down. Some of our boys caught Jap bullets. 
It would have been worse, though, without that mechanized stuff they gave us for horses. Pretty tough hide on those Shermans and Amtraks. Tougher than the ponies. Tougher even than the Doughfoots. Leyte was no breeze. There was hard fighting. We had to smoke the enemy out of their holes like coyotes. But we smoked them out all right. The supply boys did great work hustling stuff to the firing line. We kept blasting at them with rifle fire. Bazookas. Rifle grenades. So we'd put the first cavalry brand on every Jap maverick. Then we moved into Tekloban, Lady's number one city. The natives were mighty glad to see us. Us and those good old American smokes we carried. There wasn't time for a long break, though. In January, we were on Luzon, driving hell-bent for the capital, Manila. Driving 114 miles in 60 hours, stopping only to smash resistance. But we did it. We beat every other outfit into Manila. Not just for the glory, but to avenge one of our own troopers. An officer who had commanded the brigade of the 1st Cavalry back in 1939, before he went to the Philippines in Corregidor. A man whose name was Jonathan N. Wainwright. Our next APO was Tokyo. We figured invading Japan would be plenty rough. But a little something called the atomic bomb made it possible to enter Tokyo riding in a parade instead of fighting our way in. Sure, we were the first to get in. Didn't figure any other outfit would make it before us, did you? Smart-looking troopers, aren't they? Mind you, I said troopers, not soldiers. We did this job without horses, all right. But we're still troopers. Troopers of the 1st Cavalry Division. <laughs> 